Um, turn to Colossians chapter 3. We are still in the class, uh, Realities Beyond the Scene. <clears throat> and uh, for those of you who were not in this class, this is actually part two. <clears throat> so I'm not going to be able to go back over the whole class for you, <clears throat> but we've been talking about subatomic particles and that the basic pre premise is that If you had two, this one sort of warped. If you had two subatomic <coughs> particles, they would be better formed than that. They would be identical, exactly identical. Their makeup and their appearance is identical, but they react in two different ways. And there, and all particles are divided, as far as behaviorally, divided into two different categories. So this could, these can be electrons, two different categories. Um, and that is, the name we've been using was one's a boson and the other one's a fermion, which is not important. But what is important is the only difference between these two is the be their behavior. And one of them, the boson, one of them is, draws to and embraces the other particle. And the other one puts all particles at arm's length, okay? And we liken this unto members in the body of Christ that um, are either moved by the nature of Christ or something else. And, you know, there are, there are people, I remember way back, you know, some of you may have been familiar with the Plymouth Brethren. Anybody familiar with them? And they end up dividing into two different groups, and one was the Open Brethren, and the other one was the closed brethren. One group was bosons and the other one was fermions. And the, the fermion group, the closed brethren said, well, you know, unless you believe everything we believe and you act, you know, and everything's just like the way we are, then you can't have communion with us. And I'm just using them as an example. All denominations have done this sort of thing. You know, that they're not, I'm not picking on them. They're, you know, you see it within denominations around. <clears throat> and so uh, so we spent quite a bit of time, well, we spent the whole time last time really uh, discussing bosons and this embracing and this joining to other particles just as the body of Christ members are supposed to be joined together to form the body of Christ. Not Christianity, but the body of Christ. It reminds me of a story I made up a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, there was this man who was, uh, lived during the time of Jesus, and, uh, and the priest said to him, well, you need to, we don't see you in our gatherings anymore. You need to come to the temple. You need to come here and worship with us. Of course, Jesus is walking around the area, ministering and pouring out. He said, well, I don't, I don't really, you know, go to that group. I, I go out and in nature, I, I commune with the Lord. And I see more of the Lord in nature than I do in that place. All right. Well, we're talking about physics and we're talking about things of nature. We're talking about a lot of things of nature. And... You would say, and, and we see the Lord in that. But though he may be right about that gathering and in the temple, maybe he sees more of the Lord out in nature. He's not going to see more of the Lord in nature than he will in that body right over there that is Jesus walking around ministering. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus is more clearly seen and reality in his body not necessarily in a church building, but in his body, he is more clearly seen there. And so, yes, we are discussing uh, quantum physics, astrophysics, and we're seeing the Lord in that, 
But the truth is, that is declaring a greater truth than itself. Just like these particles, bosons want to join together. And they want to form something greater than themselves, which, which is what the body of Christ is supposed to be doing. Joining together so that Christ may be seen, just like when Jesus walked the earth in that physical body, people didn't, you know, when Jesus come walking up, they didn't say, hey, look there, there's Jesus and his body. They said, there's Jesus. And that body expressed him so that they would see him. And they would see, they would see his heart by some of the things he did and maybe by some of the things he didn't do. You getting what I'm saying here? And so even though we're seeing Jesus in nature and we're seeing Jesus in physics, that's not the fullness of what we're trying to see here. What we're trying to see here is that they testify of Jesus in his body. And they testify of Jesus in every part, every particle that makes up that body, that it is selfless, self-giving, that it lays down its life for the others, that it lays down its life for the whole so that Christ may be seen in that whole body. And that's exactly what they're declaring. All right, so this, this go round. We're going to talk about these uh, fermions, which hold other particles at arm's length. What we're talking about is a spirit and a nature. What we're talking about is a field, just like that thing that we did, the experiment we did last class with the magnetism, which, by the way, thank you very much for, for doing that. Bree took the time to get all of those little iron filings off of that magnet. I mean, they were sticking, man. You know, it's like, you little bosons really do stick together. <laughs> and she knows it better than anybody because she had to work really hard. In fact, she's still working on it. <laughs> you see, she's, she's working hard there, and he's causing an uproar. <clears throat> All right. Um, so... Uh, fermions, I'll just read a little bit here because I didn't do too well last class. They stay clear of others of their kind. Now, I want to I qualify that because um, these two particles, one is a fermion and one is a boson, that again is not, let me make sure that you understand this, that again is not a true designation of what they are. Their true name is subatomic particles. Boson and fermion only describes their behavior and how they treat one another. That's all. It is just a name, a tag put on them based on their behavior. But if you examine their content, they're of the same family. They are subatomic particles. They're made of the same exact stuff. They just react to other particles in a different way. And from that, the bosons which gather, which are more like Christ, they transmit energy. They transmit. They don't create it. They transmit it. Christ is that energy. Christ is that life that flows through us. And they are transmitters of that energy, whereas the fermions are not. They, they don't do it. They, are, they have their own premise upon which they work, but their makeup, and here's my point, and this is why I'm making a big deal, their makeup, if examined scientifically, is exactly the same. They are not different in their substance. All right. So... I wrote a statement here. They, let's see. Uh, we are all one and all the same in Christ. Do you agree with that? If you're born again, we're all one and we're all the same in Christ. That is non-negotiable. We are because of what Jesus did at the cross, not because of us. That has nothing to do with you and what your behaviors are. Are you with me? It's settled in heaven. It is secure in him. 
You do, you're not earning anything in Christ. You are only embracing what is true by his death, burial, and resurrection. All right. So we are all one and all the same in Christ, but we do not treat everyone else as if this is true. Come on, think about it. That there are some who are truly born again, truly in the family, but they mistreat other particles, other brothers and sisters. Whereas there are some that are, and you see Christ in them. But seeing Christ in them relates to his nature or relates to Christ being formed in you, relates to being formed in the image of Christ. That's something that is happening in you individually. We're not all at the same place. We're not all moving at the same rate. Do you understand what I'm saying? We're not all in that same place. So if you measure down here, you're going to see differences. But if you look in Christ, we are all exactly the same particle. One with Jesus, accepted in the beloved, complete in him. Can I get amen? And that needs to be settled in us. There needs to be a clear-cut understanding between the difference of being in Christ and Christ well, in you. Both are true. Both have reality. But the fact that you are in Christ means that all that he is, you are. You can't get, you know, Jesus rose again and it says that he, um, uh, how is it, that we were raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, what does that mean? Number one, it says that's past tense. We already have been raised up. There is a reality of resurrection in Christ that is true now though we're not physically resurrected. To live in the resurrection isn't to wait for something. To live in the resurrection is to embrace what is true of Christ now. That is your resurrection identity in Christ. So you don't base it all on you. When you talk about in Christ, you don't base anything on you. It's all based on him. It's his righteousness. He's made, in Christ, he's made unto you righteousness. In Christ, he's made unto you wisdom. In Christ, all of that is yours. Maybe you're not taking advantage of it in you. <laughs> but if you're born again, all of that is true of you now, though the fullness of that has not been worked in you by the Holy Spirit. What is true of you in Christ is the work, the finished work that Jesus, listen to my words, I'm being very specific, is the finished work that Jesus did for you. Christ being formed in you is the present work that the Holy Spirit is doing in you. You see, anybody see a difference? One is Christ and his work. What the Christ's work. And the other one is, finished work is what Jesus did on the cross. Is Jesus still on the cross? Oh no. Is Jesus on a throne seated? Yes. Okay, what is what does that mean? When he sat down, it's finished. Right? Why did he sit down? It's finished. <laughs> You work until, you know, Jesus particularly works until it gets the job done. When the job's done, he sits down. The job is done. He sat down at the right hand of God. That sitting down that he did should make your heart shout and sing. Why? You go, oh, that's good. Yeah, you did a good job. I'm glad you finally get to sit down. Too bad I don't. I'm still working down here. That's the way some people look at it wrong you are in him 
And if he sat down and the Father accepts him, you're his body and you're accepted in the beloved. And when Jesus is sitting at his right hand, the Father looks over, he doesn't see you, he sees Jesus. And when he hugs Jesus, he hugs you. Right? Because you're in him. You're one of those particles. That's how God the Father sees you in Christ, complete. These particles are exactly the same in their substance. They're of the same family. They're subatomic particles. Well, what are, what are you, Mr. Boson? Subatomic particle. Well, what's this fermion? Subatomic particle. Okay, so what's the difference? In Christ, it's settled. He sat down. But has the Holy Spirit sat down? Apparently, he seems pretty busy working on you and me. Why? What's he, what's he working on? Well, he's trying to make me better. No. What did you say, Brother Randy? No. No, he's trying to make me better. No. Even if he did make you better, you wouldn't be what God wanted. God doesn't want you good, bad, or indifferent. Good, bad, or ugly. And... Some of you, I'm not, I'm not saying anything, Mike Wallace. I didn't necessarily. Did I point to you, Mike Wallace? But we're, we're, what, is, what is he? He's a subatomic part of it. He is part of the body of Christ. Okay. But when it comes to you down here, God is working on not you, not to fix you, not to change you, not to do something with you. He, the Holy Spirit, is here to reveal the resurrected in Christ Jesus that rose from the dead, of which you are a subatomic particle of. So the revelation of Christ is not a revelation of you, you know. But in another sense, it is. Because the resurrected Christ is in his resurrection body, which we are. And anything that's true of Jesus in resurrection is true of you. And any scripture that you read in this book that talks about the resurrected Jesus is automatically including you. Automatically. Why? Because you're in Christ. Why? Because you're a subatomic particle of his body. That's settled. So the Holy Spirit is working with pea brains. I'll say it like that. That'll be on the internet about how bad I, the horrible things I call y'all. <clears throat> Boy, they just need to listen to another preacher I know of and what he says. But nonetheless, uh, you know, that we are so small-minded that we are still like fermions. We're concerned about ourselves. We're thinking about ourselves. Busons are trying to join with, the, with one another in resurrection. We are embracing our identity up. We are embracing our identity that sat down. Because the one that sat down and God said, the work is done, you're accepted, was us as his body also. That's it. It's done. Jesus said it's finished. So here's what we say. Jesus, here's Jesus dying on the cross. He's looking around. They're killing him. They're slapping him. They're shoving a spear in his side. Finally he goes, it's finished. When he dies, his, you know, limp head falls on his dead shoulder. We look around, and the world looks the same. We say, what do you mean it's finished? Wake up. There's more work to be done. Look around you, my God. What do you mean it's finished? God's 
send him back into his body and get him off that cross and get him to work. Because the work is finished in him, not in you. Trust me, I, I know some of you. The work is not finished in you. <laughs> but it is finished in him. And so these particles are exactly the same other than their behavior. Got it? And fermion and boson only relates to their behavior. That bosons embrace other particles and fermions keep them at arm's length. Y'all with me? You know we're talking about Jesus, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, gosh. It, in this class so far, I have read one sentence. <laughs> it's 20 till. God help me. All right, fermions. They are not force are energy transmitters, but they are the reason the material world exists. They are the building blocks of the material world. Okay, now, I know you don't know physics, but you know Jesus. It's like when I was growing up in high school and we'd get in a fight. I'd say, I don't know karate, but I know crazy. You don't know physics, but you know Jesus. <laughs> the material, based on physics, the material world, everything that you see is based on fermions. Not everything you see because the light and all that. The energy sources aren't. But the material world is based on fermions. Fermions are the building blocks of the material world. Now let's try to get that in Christ. Fermions are the building blocks of the world. They are the building blocks of life in this world. They are the building blocks of what creates all matter. Not light and energy, not transmissions of, as we said, the nature of Christ. Those are bosons. But fermions are actually, even though, you know, <clears throat> see there's a, um, there's a thought. Here, here's our thought. If it's matter, it's solid, right? But it's not, it's not. It's not solid. You're not solid, it's not solid, that wall is not solid. Every bit of this, and this isn't science fiction, this is plain and simple physics. Everything is made up of atoms. And the particular atoms that it's made up is based on fermions, and they hold a tension between them that builds into matter. You can't see it, but if you could get small enough, you just keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. If you got small enough, you would get to a place where you could walk through this matter because, and let me try to draw a picture for you, because all of these atoms, are, this is all made of atoms. This, 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 this. Anything that you see that, that is material is made of atoms, and they are packed together, but they're not as close as many, many things. And I'll explain that in just a second. And, they, and because they're so small, but there's so many of them, we say, well, it's all solid. It's, um, let me see if I got something that will help. Uh, Fermions that are repelled and stand alone do not flee far away. They stay at a distance and hold their place. You see how these are? You, anybody see spaces in between these atoms? That space is the distance keeper. <laughs> I 
This is actual physics. It is the distance. It is their strength of repelling one another that leaves these gaps. All right. They stay at a distance and, but hold their place at that distance. These particles form matter. Matter is not solid. Um, so something like neutrinos. Okay, neutrinos are getting real small now. Neutrinos are shooting through you right now. They're shooting through, yeah, they're shooting through all of us, everything. They are so small that they would just, okay, you see this, this wall of matter, but it's really just atoms. You see it? You see that neutrino? It shot right through there as if there wasn't any. It would be like uh, being in a boat, and there's a bridge over the water. And there's water here, and there's the sides, and then there's this bridge going over the top. And you're in a boat. And you're in just a little boat, and you shoot right through it. But then a big old liner tries to go through it, and it comes up to it, and it's too big to get through there. Does that help a little bit? This is exactly uh, the deal. <clears throat> um, physics will tell you that if you had, if you had a ball of let me just say a neutron star, black hole, neutron, I'll just go with a neutron star. If you had a neutron star the size of a baseball, okay? If you had a neutron star the size of a baseball, a neutron star is atoms so packed together that it is way denser than all of this matter. Meaning, meaning in our picture up here, these atoms are so packed in here, there's less gaps between them. You following me? That it is just tightly, it, it would be like a baseball that is just the tightest, and that's really what a neutron star is, just the tightest, most compact density of atoms that you could, you know, find other than a black hole. And if you took, now this is, sci this is not make-believe, this is actual physics, if you took that neutron star baseball and you threw it at the earth, it would go right through the earth. This is not science fiction. Why? Because its atoms can go through this. It just, it just shoots right through it. It is no problem at all. Now, that's weird for us. Why? Because we think this is the real world because we don't understand things on a subatomic level. Because there are realities beyond the scene. Because God on a smaller level than we can see is more real than the big universe. Because the big universe is made out of all of those same particles. And if you want to understand that universe, you don't look bigger, you look smaller. <laughs> because that's the building block. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, I'm saying all that in relationship to uh, uh, fermions, that the material world is made of fermions, and the material, the world system that functions the world system that, we, that is on a larger scale functions off of self-centered, selfish people that are out for what they can get and are holding everybody else back to, to get what they want. It's the same principle, exactly the same principle. Fermions form all of the matter of the world and self-centered particles form every ounce of the world system that would fall, the world system, I'm talking about the system of it, would fall apart if everybody was in the image of Christ. <laughs> and you'd go right through the earth.
That's exactly right. That's right. Because, you know, one of the ways that I, you know, that it can be said, if you see this, this statement spiritually, that most Christians operate on a um, classical physics manner, meaning above atomic, according to this world, what they can see, what they can feel, what is real to them. Are you following me? That's what they live on. You made a face that made me mad because you acted like you didn't like me. Uh, you didn't do this, or you did that. Or, you, know, you see what I'm saying? All of this is just reacting. It's, it's, it's just reacting to everything around us. It's being controlled by everything around us. But, again, trying to mix physics with that. But if you live on a subatomic level, you are not moved by the material world because you're really not a part of it. I mean, it, you know, the, fer the fermions form it, but the bosons are not forming it. They're shooting energy and light and life all over. The, pho the photons and, the, and the, the, the electricity, electromagnetism and all of that, all of that is bosons. And they're the only thing bringing light and life to it. I mean, if you think of the brightness of the sun, the huge vastness and the heat and the light, and sometimes we call it not just the S-U-N, but the, well, but the S-O-N, the sun, the son of God, the son of God, the sun, looking at the, the, our solar system's sun, it's a ball of energy. It's, there's no matter to it. It's not of this world. There's no matter to it. It's energy, and it's this glowing, heating, enlightening mass of bosons. No, it's, it, you say no, it's just the sun. Yes, it is but it's made up of little tiny suns called bosons. Christ, in his resurrection body, is made up of sons of God in his image. And the big daddy, the sun, it, it, its image is within every subatomic particle. They're just a little expression of Jesus. And every one of them, and there's billions and trillions of them, and they're all together shining forth the glory of the sun. And yet it's just, it's one, but it's not. It's many. But the many are one. But the one is many. But the many are really just one. You see that? And so we look at the sun and we go, because we're of the material world, we go, we, we don't think on a subatomic level. We don't operate on a subatomic level. We just go, oh, the sun. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the light that he gave me today. Thank God for the warmth that he gave me today. You're living in the wrong realm. You're a fermion. You're in the material world. You form in the material world. You're supposed to be up there seated in him, one in him, identified in him, shining forth that light, trying to reach the people on the earth. Does this make sense? You know? But we, we're, we're not living on this subatomic level. We are not <coughs> finding uh, him beyond the scene. We are not finding him in deeper and deeper levels till you get to a place, and we'll get this in a couple of, couple of classes down the road. Get this to a place where you comprehend all things by the, the, building, the building block from which everything is made. The smallest, the beginning, the fulfillment from which everything else sprang. 
But you can't do that by getting bigger. You do that by getting smaller. What did Saul of Tarsus change his name to? Paul, which means what? Little, small. And when you get smaller, when your view gets smaller, it gets more focused. And when a bunch of boussons get more focused, they form a laser. <laughs> I mean, they cut right through all that material junk and move on past it. And that's what the Spirit of God's trying to do. He's trying to get us out of the big stuff and in to the building block, the core issue, the central thing from which everything else springs instead of getting wrapped up in what sprang from it. Baptist form, what sprang from it was he got baptized in water, so we're Baptists. You know, uh, on and on and on. Each denomination having something that that subatomic particle built together and then it sprang out of it and calling that the central thing when it's not. No wonder there's divisions. No wonder there is because there's so many fermions. Those who are keeping everyone else at a distance to stand up for their thing. I'm right, you're wrong. Putting out this field that keeps everybody at arm's length. And again, while they aren't touching, because remember I drew these extra guys in, their atoms are not touching. These atoms are not. These fermions are not touching. Mater these are not touching. I know you think they are, because you're just, I'm doing this. These, if you get down small enough, you'll find it looking just like this right here. A whole bunch of atoms held in tension because they're surrounded by their same kind. And, I mean, that's their strength. That's the strength of a fermion. The strength of a boson is it gathers, and when it gets close to another one of its kind, it sparks light and energy, and it transmits light and life and energy that's a boson but a fermion its strength is its ability to keep everything around it distant and th and so uh each one of them do that so you've got this separation you've got these gaps but you don't see any of those gaps in any of this until you get down on a subatomic level and when you do you go well there there's a big separation here this material world is based on everybody being separate, every particle being separate, holding everybody else back. That's what it's built on. Now, I know you don't fully understand physics. I'm not trying to explain physics. I'm telling you that the spiritual reality of what this is, what it represents, is simply this. Every ministry that is built on building your own kingdom, becoming something in and of yourself, trying to produce something you think that God has just for you, that everybody needs to honor you and hear you. Any, any and all of that stuff is just building a material kingdom in this world. But anything that is meant not in itself to be the end, but just to be transmitters of the life of Christ, whether through light or life or energy or force or, you know, all of those because that's what bosons do. That is what they do. What do you guys do? This is what we do. Then they are simply channels through which the light is seen, and people, you know, when you put a bunch together, you know, and make just a small amount of flashlight, you put a bunch of those things together, and then you open a flashlight, or you turn on a flashlight, and you see the light so that you can find your way. You don't find your way to the big the, to the wall thing, turn on the big light, and then go look at the flashlight while it's still on, you know, but start going, oh, this is such a great flashlight. Mm. No, you're thankful for the light that got you to the big switch so you could really see. But the flashlight itself really doesn't play a big role in you. I don't know about your flashlight, but mine goes off and on. I have to shake it and hit it all the time to get the darn thing to stay lit. That's the way most Christians are. 
you know, they shine the light, and then they quit. And then they shine, and then you have to sort of slap them around and, with the word of God, and then they turn back on. <laughs> you know? But the thing, you know, it, it's a similar thing even with the sun itself. When the sun comes up in the morning, you say, oh, thank God. You, you say this, thank God the sun came up. But what you're really saying is thank God that there's light in this dark world. You're not really looking at the object and going, you, I tell you, I really like you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just trying to use an example, you know. But the source, what is the source of the light? What is the source of the heat? That one up there. But he didn't get the glory. Well, we're not supposed to get the glory either. We're just subatomic particles of a big sun that is supposed to be transmitting light and energy, and people see Jesus, and they may not even acknowledge us. They don't say, you have the best-looking, best-operating flashlight I've ever seen in my life. They probably just don't even think about you. You say, that's terrible. I'll never become famous. I'll never be Lindsay Lohan or whatever. Anyway, you know, somebody. All right, we still need to move along here. All right, don't turn there. I'll just read it. I really, what? Oh, yeah. I'm just going to read you a scripture. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Okay, what does the high priest do? He brings everybody together. He's a boson. What is Satan? He's standing at his right hand to resist him. He's a fermion. He's a fermion. <clears throat> All right. Um, so fermions do not transmit energy, but their force is in the strength with which they resist each other. Um, I've tried to draw that picture for you to see. But this strength of resistance really does unite people. It unites fermions that don't unite. Are you following me? They don't, they never come together fully. There's always this force between them that is resisting everything around it. Okay? Did you have your hand up? There you go. Very well said. I don't know if the microphone caught it, but Mallory said it's more of a solidarity than a unity or union because usually we think of unity and we, we actually translate that or define that as solidarity. No. Unity is being in union or being one. Union, it comes from the, what is it? The word that means one. And the one is Christ transmitted through us. Okay. But there is this force because like the core of Jupiter, Jupiter is what? The largest planet in our solar system, right? Jupiter, the core of Jupiter is a unique thing. The core of Jupiter is a bunch of fermions. It is a bunch of fermions that have been packed together, and fermions don't like to be packed together. Are you following me? They don't like it. But they've been packed together so tight that the resistance reality that they're forming within there in other words, whatever gaps there are, because they will keep a gap. A boson will not allow a gap. A son of God will not allow a gap because they see that I'm not just a son of God and you're a son of God. We're one in Christ, and Christ is the son in all of us. Can I get an amen on that? That's what they see. But a fermion doesn't want, I don't want to lose, you know, me. God. And the cross says, I am trying to lose you. <clears throat> anyway, uh, 
but they're packed together, and there's this tension. There's this strength of them. And remember, these things are so small, you couldn't see them with a microscope. You couldn't see them with anything. They're that small. They're sub. They're, they're not just an atom. They're below an atom, subatomic particles, and they're packed together so tight that this tension has caused a core and a gravitational pull between them. And what has happened is that the whole rest of the planet, all of that huge, huge planet is held up by the strength of resistance. <laughs> that is its power. Solidarity. Solidarity. Now, I, when I actually saw that, I, I wrote down that, that this core is held together against their will. <laughs> because it is not in the nature of a fermion to gather together. But that's when they're, you know, when they're really packed tight like that, man, they hold up, they cause a whole planet to exist. Is the planet alive? No. If there's any, any energy on that planet, it's bosons moving about, transmitting light, electricity, lightning, anything else. That's, they're the only ones that are bringing life. Yes. I think they both do. Your, his question was, do I think uh, bosons create gravity? I'll tell you right now, <clears throat> you know, uh, physicists, the biggest thing that they don't understand is gravity. They do not understand gravity. Okay? And in fact, trying to... subatomic level and marry that with quantum physics which is very different we'll see that probably in our next class uh, <coughs> next week <coughs> uh, to marry those two together they can't do it at this stage there is a confused there is a an unknown factor and the biggest reality within that is gravity and I want to I'll actually deal with that next class I'll deal with it through the explanation of in out in the universe behind the stars, behind everything unseen, are two forces at work. One of them is called dark matter and the other one is dark energy. And we'll get into all of that. But gravity is a, is a part of this whole thing, but that's the one area. And that, that's what Einstein, who, who <clears throat> came up with most of the real breakthroughs of classical physics, And then when quantum physics came out, because he didn't come up with that, he came up with many of the realities of quantum physics that opened the whole realm of, of what we call the information age. I mean, just everything that we use is based on that. <clears throat> um, but what was I going to say about him in that sense? Oh. After his last great uh, mathematical equation that proved some great things, he lived probably 30 years after that, maybe longer, and he spent every ounce of his time trying to find the unifying theory that would make them all flow because he believed that there was one thing that, melt, that made it all fit together, and he believed he believed it was God, or he believed it was after the image of God. And I, I'll prove that later on, too. You say, well, Einstein, wasn't he Jewish? Yeah, the Jews believe in God, you know. You know, just so you, you know. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yeah, we got 10 minutes left, but if I go 10 more minutes, it's going to start getting late, so maybe I should stop. Uh, 
So anyway, let me just try to sum up a little bit. Uh, and that is the reality of uh, fermions and bosons are actually, all of them are subatomic particles. Everything, everything, light, energy, and material are made from subatomic particles. But one group behaves, even though it's the same substance, it behaves differently than the other. One group uh, holds other ones of its kind at arm's length, and the other one embraces and draws in and forms something beyond itself. Okay? That's the basis of what we've been studying these last two classes. And <clears throat> all we've been doing is looking at the physics reality and seeing Christ in that in his body. Because all of these things declare the glory of God yes. and are trying to reach us and that we, you know, again, and I'll try to interrupt with this, if we studied nature we, and we really understood it and God opened our eyes, we would see Jesus. But it would be the difference between, again, Jesus standing here with me and he's in that body and me going out into nature and looking at the trees and the sun and everything and going, you know, oh, I'm just getting the Lord out here. But if you really, really, really saw the Lord in it, if you really saw the, the sun as the center of the universe, not the earth, and we saw the moon as representing the church that is reflecting the sun's light to the dark side of the earth that has no light, and we're showing forth the light of the sun when they can't see him, they see him in us, and on and on and on. It's all declaring the glory of God. But we must eventually turn from looking at the sun and the trees and the sap and the roots and the seed falling in the ground. We must eventually turn and we must just see Jesus and the person and nature of Jesus. And then we must end with seeing ourselves in that sun as one of the subatomic particles, in that sun as a member of his body. And no, no longer try to become something but embrace what he has made us in himself. Stop striving. Stop wrestling with, uh, like in physics, wrestling with the mathematical equations. Have you ever seen a physicist write stuff on the board? Have you ever seen, I mean, it's just like, you know, R, K, Z, W with the two, and it just goes on and 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 it's just like, what is this? Well, that's religion. That's religion. Amen. So Einstein comes along and explains the basic real, uh, thing of uh, relativity. He writes, E equals MC squared. Not that long. And it revolutionized the whole world, particularly the world of physics, but the whole world. It was about that long. And he said, he, one of the things he said is, I would like to explain God in a mathematical equation that was simple. That was his desire. He said that. I would like to explain God in a mathematical equation that is simple. Because he was looking at the Lord and he discovered his discoveries. He was looking at God and he discovered his discoveries. And see, all of these physicists that are trying to become something but are rejecting God, you can't even, you, you, you won't even come close. All right, we'll end with that. Father, we just ask you to open our hearts not to physics, not to mathematical equations, not to religion. Help us to see Jesus. And in seeing Jesus, help our identity to be changed so that we're not always working on ourselves, but we're shining forth your light and your energy through us and that we are constantly aware we are just a transmitter. You are the force that is at work within us. And that the greater result of that happens that we embrace the body of Christ. And that together 
we shine forth this, the brightness of the sun. As each of the subatomic particles is a small transmitter together, we bring light and heat to a dark, cold world. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, thank you guys for coming. We're dismissed. <laughs>